The tour has thrown up a number of unplanned but morale-boosting encounters. In Boston, Paolo gets to meet a musical legend and fellow Scottish football fanatic. Both have gigs tonight, but with some minor rescheduling, they're able to find time after their sound checks to catch up. It's a chance for Paolo to get some advice and see what touring is like in the big league. Yes, the most English Scotsman I've met, but Scotsman nevertheless. He's a man after my own heart, he really is. They're just in time, it's just about to start something up. Let's go and do it. How you doing? Obviously, we're going to go on stage. I know, I've seen what I've been walking on the chart. It was my uh, publicist phoned me up and she said, well, you've got to listen to this guy, Paolo. And that same day, I think I heard new shoes on the radio. I'm going to make it right here, guys. Run right down here, please. Paolo, guys. I think the only similarity between me and Paolo is we're both Celtic supporters. I think... Uh, He's his own man, you know, he's, I don't think we sound anything like at all, you know, we're both good looking. Um, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's got his own sound, a very distinct voice, which I think is so important. So you like this? Oh, can we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've played in the round before, it's a lot of hard work, because you're constantly going like this. The thing is, once you've got the four cameras up here, they put me up on the screen, so I'm always facing the audience on the screen. But it's still a lot of work. I think he'll do very well because he comes across as being quite humble, which is, I think, always appealing and also vulnerable, as unlike Robbie, who I think is sometimes a bit too British and brash, you know, a bit sort of Norman wisdomish. Um, I think the opposite approach with Paolo, which is the way he is, is you know, he's a little bit tired, which is, which I think is very appealing. For the badge? He's a little awkward on the microphone at the moment, and I used to be, so that's something he's got to work on, you know, he's, and he's got to look at the audience a little bit more, because he is a good-looking kid. It may be the way he delivers his vocal, you know, because I always sing like that, which is technically totally wrong. He may have to sing like that, you know, to get the sound out that he gets. That's a legend, yeah, as you know. Leg in. Leg in. There's a, a lot to staying around as long as I have. He's got the voice, there's no doubt about it. You know, it's, uh, I just hope his record company don't look at the bottom line all the time and see this guy can be around for a long time. You know, he's got a great future. I really mean it, a great future. You said you When I sing the songs, I start to think about what the songs are about, and then when I do that, I shut my eyes. And... But then I've started to sort of try and come out of it a little bit, trying more, you know, stand shoulders up and sing my songs. I don't know, a lot of the people that I watched and loved their live performances when they sing, you know, they could tell they were singing them and thinking about what they were, what they were talking about. I mean, watching people like Marvin Gaye perform and stuff like that, you know, it's a real, you know, it takes real pride in what he's saying. You can tell he really believes in what he's singing, and, and maybe that's a way to go.
Thank you. When I get time on my own, I sleep in. I sleep in past 11 sometimes, sometimes 12. You're always sort of waking up in somewhere where you need to discover it. And it's nice when you get to go some places where you actually get to see some things that, that you wanted to see. See you soon. Philly, we were running up the rocky stairs. That was a special moment for me, and I know my dad would have been there to see it. He would have been very proud, he would have been very happy, being a big Rocky fan that he is. I raced Mike Weber, my manager over in the States. I won, but I um, didn't fare too well afterwards. No, I, I tarnished the Rocky steps. It was an awful experience. Don't do Patron tequila shots before you run up Rocky steps. It doesn't go. Hilo and the band have been on the road in the U.S. for two months. In that time, they visited 45 radio stations, 19 record stores, and played 26 gigs to over 25,000 people. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Has it all been worth it? Things have been going great. You know, the tour that we started off with has ended up in a totally different space. We're basically playing in big, beautiful theaters all across America. Everything's selling out. We originally were going to play at the Troubadour, which holds about four or 500 people. It's a legendary, awesome place. But the demand was so much that we were able to move it to the Avalon where we're playing tonight. And realistically, we probably could have done another 800 people on top of it. We're up to about 55,000 copies. And... Um, you know, some of our greatest markets, like Los Angeles tonight, we had a sold-out show, probably about 1,500 people. So we'll see that reflected in sales within the next week. So people are starting just to connect the dots between the artist, the song, the person. We're getting some video airplay, and I think that's fantastic. <laughs>